Just a little tip of the day for Land Rover owners. Sweet condensed milk. It doesn't seem to go off. And it's always a substitute for milk if you happen to have run out and the shops are shut like they are now. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. In our last little mini video series on welding, we uh, cut off a diff pan and then we welded up a heavy duty armoured uh, diff pan in its place. So this week we're going to go one further and uh, weld on some trusses onto the axle casing. Well, saying weld them on, I'd better switch on the welder first, hadn't we? If you're a stranger to axle trussing, basically what this is about is uh, fitting some trusses or some strengthening pieces to the longer part of the axle casing to make sure that the axle case doesn't bend or break. This example photograph here shows of a casing that's actually snapped in half and uh, not a good situation. Obviously it's not a new thing and off-roading experts obviously will have their axles trussed so they don't bend and fail at the wrong time. Plenty of different ways of trussing an axle and uh, there's no set way of doing it. The more extreme an axle is going to uh, get into situations, the more extreme possibly the trussing is going to have to be. Our weapon of choice, and thanks for the person who posted this on uh, Pirate 4 before, basically our axle we want to look something like this because this has been a double truss, top and bottom, uh, long part of the axle and the short part of the uh, axle half shaft casing as well. So basically you can get a couple of kits, KAM770, which for the rear axle, and you can see here that the vehicles are listed, and then there's KAM775 from Terra Firma. Well actually it's TF770 and TF775, and TF775, well they basically are a 6mm uh, laser cut still and then folded into a shape almost that fits onto your axle. Prices vary up to about £60, but generally you're looking at 38 to 40 odd pounds for an axle reinforcing kit. The rear axle reinforcing kit is more expensive for the 90. Generally on our Defender Discovery axles they are two halves welded together which actually gives it a very strong casing in the first place. Unlike the Jimmy one here which has a weld which can break. It's still good to have reinforcement and of course it looks pretty cool under your vehicle if you're that way inclined. We've already got the uh, heavy duty diff pan which is armoured so we may as well go just that little bit further and uh, truss up the axle as well. So to find it, um, I'm not recommending any uh, sellers here, but I'll put Terra Firma TF775 in, come up with LRDirect.com and what we have here is 38 quid, um, price 42 excluding VAT, or including VAT, sorry, and plus postage. And if you look up in the corner there, there was also a YouTube notification for uh, Fraser, who used to be the rugged guide. I just had to click on that to have a quick look. And what he's uh, showing us is the amazing camper conversion. And actually, it is a quite a good one. If Once you've finished this video, click over and have a look at it. Right then, so what you get in the post is an ill fitting uh, truss set okay you can see that this actually doesn't quite fit over the axle because it's been made square and it needs to be spread out a bit it's quite substantial metal and what you have to do is widen this part here to get it to fit over there's no point in grinding anything because you'll only weaken it you possibly could use a large hammer if you're struggling. Don't forget that these two um, drain holes have not got to be uh, blocked. So what I did here was use a press with a little bit of man force and pushed it open just a little bit. And uh, if you see how I've done it here, it's basically on an angle, finding the uh, leverage point and then pushing it open. Now, if it won't quite fit further down, you'll have to basically jiggle it until it does fit because obviously with steelworks, not everything fits first time. This is, isn't a precision piece of engineering. So you'll need a bit of uh, forethought to uh, adjust it so it will fit. 
So you can see here, after a little bit of spreading, it will fit much better. Uh, basically, you want to line it up with the top of the diff case. You can see the difference between the bump stop and the diff. Okay, if you turn it into this fashion here, it doesn't work. Anyway, fitted in the right place, you'll see there is a gap. However, this edge here fits on the axle nicely all the way down. And this is the area that we're going to weld. We don't have to weld at the end near the uh, suspension hanging parts. But basically what we're left up the end here is a gap which we'll have to find a way around. Obviously with welding we need to be able to remove any paint or rust or whatever so we have a clean um, working surface. I'm just using a flat wheel here and uh, removing the paint that I put on earlier. Which is a pity because this did cost me a little bit of money to paint. However the uh, end result of this will be worth it so uh, I'll just say goodbye to the paint here. I'm using an engine stand and with the extra weight that's added, which apparently is only 3 kilograms, it does put a strain on the engine stand, so I'm using an axle stand. You do what you feel is necessary so it is um, supported. Right, so the other th issue that we do have is the breather, okay, which is here on the longest part of the axle tube on the front axle. Uh, we could position it somewhere else or we could make modifications so that we can uh, access the breather hole and uh, basically you do get a slot in the uh, top bracket and what I'm going to do here is actually drill a hole so I'll mark it off and then mark it onto the uh, workpiece that we're working on now you have an option here is to gas cut it or in my case I used a tank cutter and um, I'm basically going to cut a big enough area so I can access the breather hole when needed. Okay, so something like this. Obviously, you'll do it your own way. I've used a tank cutter and just be aware that the arbor will actually go right the way through into the axle unless, of course, you have uh, squared it up with the breather hole, which I did, or do it on a bench first. So basically, with that removed, you'll see now that in here I have access to the breather. Now I think this was uh, something like a 30mm uh, arbor and tank cutter and there you go I can access the breather very easily without any trouble. So that's that issue out of the way. Just to make sure I don't cut my fingers when I'm actually fitting the bolt or the banjo union for the breather just making sure I'm taking the burrs and the sharp edges off with a, a deburr tool. This is a quarter inch die grinder with a piece fitted. Right so here comes the fun bit which is welding the truss to the axle casing. Now I'll explain this while I'm welding. Basically heat distorts and if you weld one side of an axle casing for instance it will pull the axle out of true. So what we need to consider is to mirror the welds that we do and consider that it will be as above as below and mirror the welds that you do. So what I propose is to weld two runs or three runs on one side and then three runs on the other side to mirror it and then um, run in parallel two or three welds on either side. This way the axle casing is going to stay straight. After you've welded three runs, for instance, on each, you can then fill in between the welds. The idea here, of course, is to keep the axle as straight as possible and the heat in proportion to each other. And what I would advise is only to do short runs and keep the heat to a minimum. Now I'm running on 110 amps and I'm doing short runs. So the heat is fairly localised but what will happen if you weld one side of the casing completely it will lift it on the other side and of course it will twist the tube. So you can see here what I mean by three runs and then mirror them on the other side and then do them equal and once you've done them you can then um, groove them out a bit and weld in between. I, I'm not sure if, this, if you understand this or not but you don't do a complete run of weld on one side first. Amperage is very important here. I'm just about to show you something that's been welded at 140 amps. 
Now I'll just take the screen away from the camera and you'll see that this is a nuclear power station sort of heat here and it's heated the metal to an extreme amount. You don't want this at all basically because it will weaken the metal. Any heat changes to metal obviously changes its structure. Right so I'm going to put a runner weld here and roughly this is 110 amps which is excellent with a 3.025 rod. Remembering this is a 6mm steel, or 6mm thick steel anyway, and you won't see too much heat, but we have penetration here and the weld is hot. It's penetrated enough and this is sufficient of what you need. Short runs of uh, welding on slugs as we call it in the UK is sufficient. Uh, let it cool down and you won't have any distortion of your casing. So you can see here, first set and then second a set of runs. I've uh, mirrored them and done them opposite, obviously not perfectly, however this has done the same both sides, I had to knock the uh, slag off here. It's not particularly pretty but it's welded completely and it's not going to pull the casing um, in any direction. Right, so what I've left here at the ends is where I have some big gaps. So basically this is the next thing we've got to deal with. Okay, a little bit of advice from Ben Powell, who uh, laid a comment down on uh, one of our welding videos. Basically, he's a plate welder, so he knows what he's talking about. It is to uh, do multiple runs on uh, low power, and then lay a, a root run, grind it back, and then turn the power up and whack it in. So this is what we're going to do. As you can see here, it actually doesn't look like it's... Um, too much of a gap and if you look at the weld as well it has something called wagon tracks in it which uh, looks like it's uh, splitting okay that's a weld defect up there but it's a, a quite considerable gap so what we're doing is we're actually laying multiple runs in there and you can see they're actually not brilliant and then we've ground it back turned the power up of course and then we laid in um, a nice weld well i've actually done a couple of uh, runs on this one on the edge as a lap weld and then filled it with uh, a little bit more weld because uh, the E6013 rod is a filler rod so uh, you can get quite a spread on that as you can see there. Now this is one way to cope with the gap on the edges here so I'm just going to run a little bit more of a bead down here and then clean it up. And you can see the results of what I've done. Basically, as I said, the uh, the rod uh, the 6013 is a filler rod, so uh, that's pretty good to work with. And uh, we've succeeded in filling up the gaps. On the other side, it's too close to where the diff fits, so I've not welded it at all. So the, basically, you have it. That's welded up. It's the same at both sides. And uh, I can't really tell you any more about this. It's, uh, it's already done and dusted. These are drain holes, and they need to be clear. Okay, don't weld them up. The other thing that I'd had comments on Facebook about um, drain holes uh, for water and mud, and basically underneath there is a drain hole, so uh, if it's clear it should let out fluids. And of course at the end it's not welded, so there's clear passage. If you're um, unsure about it, you could always drill yourself some holes with a tank cutter, for instance, like I did earlier on. Just remember not to drill into the axle casing, of course, otherwise you'll be having leaks. All right, so that's done. Then basically it's clean steel. Once you've uh, polished it off, as it were, got the mill scale off, you can then primer it. This is a heavy uh, zinc content primer. Doesn't need something like uh, Corollas S or uh, Buzzweld RCP because there's no rust on it. Painting inside, well, I don't know. You're going to have to use your imagination on this one. However, this uh, is a good modification for those who really need it.